Wow, what an amazing view! And we can even see some Kohosaurs here and there. Hey, why don't we try to get a picture with one or two of them in the wild? Well, they're so cute. They probably won't do that. Right? Huh? What's happening over there? Help! Somebody help us! Ah! Wild Kohosaurs are actually biting people! Yeah, those two are in trouble. The legendary traveler and his trusty sidekick, Paimon, will not stand by idly. Judging from your clothes, you must be scholars from Sumeru, right? Yes, I'm Karya, and this is my senior, Bramdra. Thank you so much for saving us. That was a little too close. Don't mention it. Handling these sort of things is practically second nature to us by now. Uh, Paimon is Paimon, and this is the trap. Still, it seems that all the Koholosaurs just ran off. We need to capture at least one alive. Uh, capture one alive? Correct. Say, I can see you are very skilled at dealing with them. Do you think you could use me as live bait to help us capture one? I will pay you for the effort. Uh, well... Apologies. Varandra has been hyper-focused on his research. So please, don't be too hard on him. Oh, no worries. But why did you approach a whole group of wild kaholosaurs, and what's this talk about capturing them? <laughs> Paimon's pretty sure that's not what they're trying to do. I'm sure we must look very silly. The fact of the matter is that we're searching for a mysterious island from a certain legend. It's said that a very important clue about the island can be found on Koholosaurs, so... Approaching them without the help of a guide from the people of the springs was certainly an unwise choice on our part. A mysterious island? Yes. There is a legend from the people of the springs that mentions a mysterious island, and Vranja believes the key to his research can be found there. Ahem. <clears throat> Are you certain you two won't consider my proposal to capture one? Some proposal? There's no way we'd be willing to use a person as live bait! Then I suppose discussing it any further will just be a waste of time. I must come up with another solution. <clears throat> For Ramdra. Oh, all right. You did rescue Karia and I just now, and I suppose I should express some gratitude. Thank you very much. A little awkward, but Paimon will take it. We should move on, Karia. Yes, thank you again. My apologies. Bramja really doesn't have the best people skills. That's all right. Bye now. You really don't see a pair of adventurers like those two every day. But anyway, Paimon's really curious about that mysterious island that lady just mentioned. Yeah, who knows? There might be treasure! After all, the amazing places we've explored during our adventures, finding some mysterious island should be a walk in the park for us. Ah, oh, you're right. The lady mentioned that the mysterious island is related to a legend of the people of the springs. So maybe we can start by asking some of them about it. Time's ticking, let's get started on our next adventure! But the real question is, who should we ask? Hmm, that's an idea. If anyone, the chief of the tribe should know the details. Someone looking for me? Oh, why if it isn't the traveler and his companion? So what brings you here? Do you need help with anything? We want to visit the mysterious island. Hmm, the mysterious island, huh? Um, is there something wrong? I'm assuming you two are already aware that this island is related to a legend of my people. Yeah, but now that you mention it, we don't know anything about the actual legend yet. <laughs> then allow me to explain it to you two. It is said that the first chief of the people of the springs was the most outstanding guide in all of Netlan. He discovered many deserted domains and found countless treasures. 
But to prove himself once more, he embarked on yet another journey in search of a legendary mysterious island. He endured many hardships along the way, but he persevered and managed to reach the destination. The island emits a golden light where countless treasures are buried. But instead of claiming the treasures for himself, he left behind a trail of clues that lead to the island. Since then, many people from later generations have undertaken the challenge of finding the island. After all, to find the island is to find riches and glory. Oh, that makes sense! So could you tell us how to get to that island? Hmm... Oh, Paimon gets it! This is like a big secret for the people of the spring, so you can't just tell anyone, right? On the contrary, it's quite the opposite. The legend and the clues needed to find the island are all already known to the public. Oh! Well, then what's the problem? Well, I'm willing to answer your question in exchange for a favor. What do you think? Sure thing! But what do you need us to do? <laughs> then you have my thanks. Allow me to tell you some details. I'll be honest, there are some among the tribe who are of rather... base character. Not long ago, I received a report that a few of them were working together to scam visitors. As the chief of the tribe, I was very ashamed to hear of this. It's really hard to believe that could happen. They are targeting tourists who wish to visit that island. According to my sources, they would trick tourists into believing they are trustworthy guides before luring the tourists into spending a fortune for the sake of reaching the island. They run a pretty sophisticated operation. They would always claim the scammed money as some kind of legal travel expenditure, so it's hard to use that to directly convict them. So, I was hoping to find someone who could approach them and pretend to get scammed. Doing so would allow us to gather the evidence required to bring them to justice. The problem is, they would certainly recognize anyone associated with me, which is why I haven't been able to carry out the plan yet. Oh, Paimon understands now! We're the perfect bait because we're both tourists. Exactly! And as far as I know, you two are no pushovers. No matter what nefarious schemes they may come up with, you'll be perfectly capable of protecting yourselves, right? You betcha! If it's just a few scammers we're talking about, he'll take them all down! <laughs> Wonderful! Then here, please take this. Uh, whoa, uh, that's a lot of mora! Did we already earn a bonus? There will be plenty of rewards if you manage to catch those scoundrels. This mora, however, is for other purposes. I'm sure some spending will be required on your part before they lower their guard. I certainly wouldn't expect you to pay out of your own pockets. So please use the mora as needed and collect as much evidence as possible. No wonder you're the chief. Seems like you've already thought of everything. Okay, we'll take it from here. <laughs> I've marked the location of the scammers on your map. I'll leave the rest to you two. This should be the place. Now let's see if anyone around here looks like a scammer. Oh, right. We should pretend we are innocent tourists with no idea about what's going on. Uh, but how should we lure those scammers out? Good idea. Speaking of which, Paimon's dying to know what kind of treasures could be buried on the mysterious island. Wonder if anyone's ever really seen them before. Ah, are you two visitors from afar looking to visit the mysterious island? Who the... Oh, looks like we managed to lure them out already. <clears throat> oh, pardon, is something the matter? I just happened to overhear you two talking about the mysterious island. I assume you two must be tourists, brought here by the legend and looking for the island. Am I right? That's right, we were just getting ready to look for that island from the legend. In that case, as a qualified guide, I certainly cannot allow you to embark on such a dangerous journey. Uh-huh. 
as the legend says, if you can manage to reach the mysterious island, riches and glory will be yours for the taking. Be that as it may, the journey to the island is full of untold perils and dangers. It would be nigh impossible for any average person to reach the island. But you are in luck. Allow me to tell you the purpose of our services. It just so happens that our mission as guides is to help visitors avoid danger, find shortcuts, and successfully reach their destination. Um... Please, there's no need to worry. This was just one point I had to make perfectly clear. Although the legend and the clues to finding the island are known to everyone, the leads left behind by our ancestors are as enigmatic as riddles found on a lost treasure map. Only guides bestowed with the legacy of our ancestors can correctly decipher the clues. Tourists who rashly embark on their own often wind up lost and encounter unnecessary dangers. Huh. He actually sounds pretty convincing. But it seems like fate has brought us together. So, what say you to having me as your guide? Uh, so how much will you charge us? Not to worry. I don't intend to charge any fees. So you'd be working for free? For us, people of the Springs, guiding guests to the mysterious island is a great honor in and of itself, worth more than any amount of Mora. Smooth. Aimon almost wants to believe him. All right, thank you. Then please, guide us onward. Of course. Please, follow me. Please remember, we need concrete evidence. I'm counting on you. Hmm? Huh? Are you two here to take pictures with the Koholosaurs? Really? Can we? Ahem. <clears throat> huh? Oh, you two must be here to seek insight from Atta, right? Um, Atta? Insight? Shh, not so loud. Openly saying their name in such a manner will only cause them to loathe you. Ah, I apologize for not explaining earlier. As you can see, Atta is the elder Koholosaur. My senior here is responsible to serve. Atta is highly respected among the tribe and is far more knowledgeable than other Koholosaurs. They say that Atta has actually visited the mysterious island before. Therefore, we must rely on Atta's insight to know how to get there. Really? But how do we do that? Can a Koholosaurus elder talk? You need only slowly approach Atta. Once Atta has confirmed your scent, they will provide their wise insight. In the language of the Koholosaurus, of course. But no need to worry. The ability to interpret this language is one of the basic skills required of a guide from the people of the Springs. I can understand Atta's instructions and will lead you on the journey ahead. All right, then let's give it a try. <clears throat> That'll be 10,000 mora per person. Huh? Uh, in order for Atta to give us insight, they must recall their past, which can be extremely taxing for a Koholosaur. Cost to maintain their health can be quite high, you know. I'm sorry. Such expenses may arise in the process of finding our way, but as long as we reach the mysterious island, these costs will be quite trivial in the end. There you have it. Paimon knew there was no such thing as a free lunch. Oh, Paimon has an idea. She bets they've just made up all that stuff about the talking Koholosaur. But if we can get a receipt, that'll be proof that they're scamming tourists. With that kind of evidence, There'll be no doubt they're guilty. <sighs> What's taking them so long? Well, what do you say? I'll even throw in a group photo of you two with Atta. You won't ever find another deal like this. Oh, that's an unexpected bonus. Quick, let's pay the man. Oh, Atta really didn't try to bite us at all. You can also pose now if you'd like a photo together.
Oh, Atta is already speaking. Let me listen to what they have to say. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm. Oh, I see. Could you really get anything from that noise? Of course. Like I said, only a guide like me can understand their language. Let's follow Atta's instructions and proceed to the next area. Here's your group photo. I even packaged it up for free. Any chance we could get a receipt for that? No problem at all. Here you go. <laughs> Please, come with me. We still have a lot of the Chief's more to use. Why don't we keep up the act and gather some more evidence? <laughs> Paimon's curious what other tricks these scammers are using. These guys are going way too far. He keeps coming up with some far-fetched reasons to make us pay for everything. With all the evidence we have now, we could bring him straight to the chief and he'd definitely be convicted. But after handing over all that Mora, Paimon kind of wants to see if he'll actually take us to the island or not. Sorry to keep you waiting. After all the clues we've gathered, I've managed to find a shortcut to the island. Oh, all right, then let's get going. This is the spot. The trails of sunlight will guide the way. Once you cross the rushing water, the light of the setting sun shall reveal everything. Atta's insights have already pointed us to the destination. It's just on the opposite bank. You mean, we're almost there? Huh. But there wasn't even anything exciting about this journey. As I said before, this is a shortcut. If I took you on some arduous path after all the mora you spent, that would not make me look like a good guide, don't you think? Anyway, there's no time to lose. We need to get there before sunset. According to Atta's insights, this is the place. We're here. Uh, you mean the mysterious island? Yes, I've led you to the island just as I promised, which means it's time for me to say goodbye. Hold on! Are you serious? This is supposed to be the island? Then what about the treasure? And look at these wooden signs and artificial lights! Even we can tell it's fake! All that stuff about treasure is just part of the legend. I didn't make any promises about what you'd find. And who says a mysterious island can't look like this? Huh. Since you seem to have dropped the act, then there's no need for us to continue either. We were commissioned by the Chief of the People of the Springs to gather evidence of your scamming activities. With these receipts, your scamming days are over. <laughs> you sure? Then what's written on those receipts? Huh. Let's see. Huh? Wait, all the writing has disappeared. I took you all this way just to buy enough time for the handwriting to disappear. Even if you were to go back to the people you paid, you'd only find that they were using fake names, making them impossible to track down. You want to report me for scamming tourists? Then be my guest. I'll just say that I'm being falsely accused. With that settled, I'll be going now. Ah, now he's trying to get away! Let's go after him! It's the chief! What's the chief doing here? I have dispatched others to secretly trail you. Thanks to you, we can finally convict him of scamming people. Convict me? How? They don't have any evidence against me. Even as the chief, you can't just level accusations without any evidence, right? Sorry to say it, but he got us. We lost all the evidence we had. Not to worry. Let's search him first. Hey, what are you doing? Keep your hands off me! Th that's my Mora! Yes, I see the mark. Looks like you already split the Mora before you let them here. What do you mean? The Mora that the Traveler and Paimon were using today were all provided by me. They all have a special mark on them. You? So... There must be an explanation why the Mora that should have been theirs ended up in your hands, right? There are no receipts to prove that any transactions took place, and you yourself just denied that there was a scam. So...
So did you then take the Mora from them by force? Take Mora from others by force? Oh, that's an even more serious crime than scamming! Uh, you... you... Ugh. All right. Sure, I admit that I coaxed them into spending a few times, but I wouldn't go as far as calling it scamming. We have witnesses standing right here, you know. Fine. Yes, it was all a scam. Woohoo! No wonder you're the chief of the tribe! <sighs> I still don't understand how so many people have been getting duped by them. You need only stop and think for a moment to see through the whole thing. If he claims to be able to find a shortcut to the mysterious island, then why hasn't he just gone there and claimed the treasure for himself? Why even bother guiding others there? That's a good point. Speaking of, have any guides from the people of the springs ever found the treasure of the mysterious island? I can answer this question along with your previous one about how to get there. The answer is actually very simple. There is no shortcut to the island, and most people don't even meet the requirement to ever reach it. If you don't meet this single condition, then even guides from the people of the springs, despite all of their abilities, will find it difficult to overcome the obstacles along the way. Which is exactly why, even though the clues to the mysterious island are open to the public, few have ever made it there. There's a requirement? What is it? Let me ask you something first. What do you think a real journey to the mysterious island should be like? I... Uh, it should probably involve... overcoming a lot of hardships with your companions before witnessing some breathtaking sights, uh, uncovering a really touching story, oh, and scoring some super cool treasure at the end. And therein lies the key point, overcoming hardships with your companions. It's said that when the first chief set out to search for the island, the ones who accompanied him were not clients, nor tourists, but his closest friends. The legend also mentioned that only those willing to entrust their lives to one another will be able to reach the island together. Therefore, the requirement to reach the island is journeying with your closest friends, the kind of friends you would trust with your life. So that's the key. From what I can see, you and Paimon are exactly those kinds of friends, the kind that would trust each other with anything. But unfortunately, neither of you are experienced guides, and if you were to hire someone else, then I'm afraid you could probably never place your lives in the hands of someone you met on a pure monetary basis. That's true. But don't feel discouraged. I believe that this beautiful land that I call my home will not disappoint you. Whether it's remote islands or ancient ruins, I'm sure they can also provide you with plenty of exciting adventures. And let me tell you a secret. The elders once told me that beneath these very ruins lies a way to reach the sky! Or maybe someone already discovered that. No matter, if you two want to go adventuring elsewhere, I can also give you some suggestions. Yeah, thanks for that. But knowing us, we don't give up so easily even when a place is supposedly impossible to visit. Oh, I can understand. I won't stop you if you're still interested in finding the island. I just recommend finding a guide first who you could trust with your lives. A guide we could trust with their lives? Oh, who knows when we'll meet someone like that around here? Oh, we could go find Mulani! It appears you've already made up your minds. Then I'll be taking my leave. My assistants will pay you for all your help. Thanks again. Okay, bye-bye! Sorry, we don't carry any black swimming floaters here. Uh, but why? Black floaters look really cool. 
Hmm. Uh, may I ask whether you've had some bad luck lately? Uh, well, yeah, sorta. The last pair of black floaters I bought ended up getting bitten by Koholosaur. I nearly drowned. Which is why I want to buy some new ones. I knew it. I specifically asked an expert from the Masters of the Nightwind about this once. Black floaters bring bad luck. R really Also, have you by any chance become a mosquito magnet? Or found yourself overheating? Maybe even suffering a little heat stroke? Yeah, that's exactly how I've been feeling. It's all starting to make sense now. In that case, I'd recommend either pink or blue swimming floaters. According to the experts, bright colors can not only lift your mood, but also bring good luck. I'll even offer you a discount if you'd like. Just see it as a way of celebrating your luck taking a turn for the better. You'd really do that? Then I'll take one of each. You got it. Ahem. Well, hello there, if it isn't the Traveler and Paimon. It's been a while, Mulani. Was all that stuff you were saying just now really true? Do pink and blue floaters really bring good luck? Of course. I know a friend who nearly drowned once, but because she was wearing blue floaters, a group of Koholosaurs came to the rescue and brought her back to shore. Whoa, for real? But let's get back to why you're here. Are you looking to buy some water sports products? Come on, don't be strangers now. I can give you whatever you need. You are guests here, after all. It's only natural for me to give some gifts to you. No, no, we actually came here to ask you to be our guide. Well, you've come to the right person. So, where do you want to go? We want to visit the mysterious island from the legend. A trip to the mysterious island? Oh. Do you have any concerns, Mulani? I assume you're already aware of how difficult the trip will be, right? Yep, your chief has already made that pretty clear. But with our adventuring experience and with you as our guide, we'll definitely be able to reach the mysterious island. Then I'll have to explain some things to you first. I learned all my skills as a guide from Uncle New, and he's the best guide in the whole tribe. But apparently, even he has never successfully reached the island. With a good guide to lead the way, a journey should usually be fun and pleasant. However... Going to the mysterious island is different, and I don't know if I can guarantee that. But since it's you two asking, I definitely won't refuse. It's just my duty as a guide to explain these things before I officially agree to go on the journey. Paimon thought this would be a piece of cake for you, but it seems like we're actually asking a lot. Uh, Paimon will feel really guilty to make a friend go through a bunch of trouble just for the sake of finding some treasure. Uh, Mulani? Whoa, what's the hurry? Come on, what are you waiting for? Kolo just got back to the tribe. I heard he found another underground ruin full of treasure. Oh, Kolo's back. Wait for me. Who's Kolo? Oh, he's currently ranked as the number one guide in the People of the Springs. Besides the tribe's first chief, he's the only other guide who's ever made it to the mysterious island. Really? He's always out and about, so we don't get to see him often. Sounds like this is quite an occasion, though. <laughs> Let's go check it out. Uh, let me put up the closed sign first. Okay, come with me. The crystals you asked for can only be found in caverns deeper than 500 meters underground. Here, have a look for yourself. As for the people you asked me to take along, they almost all got lost in a cave. Out of my sense of duty as a guide, I brought them all back. Next time, just save the trouble and let me go alone. Indeed, well done. No wonder he's the best. I wouldn't dare to go more than 200 meters down into a cavern like that. I wonder how much he made this time. Whoa, he really does sound like a super amazing guide. Do you think you could get some pointers from him, Mulani? Who knows, maybe he could save us some trouble on our trip to the mysterious island. 
Ko'olo always treats his experience like trade secrets. He never tells anyone anything about being a guide. Oh, okay. But one day, I'll also be able to reach the island. That's him, right? Do you really think you'll be able to get his help? Allow me to do the talking. <clears throat> you must be the top guide of your tribe. I have a commission that I hope you'd be willing to consider. Hmm, that guy sure looks familiar. Oh, aren't those two the scholars from Sumeru who are bitten by the Koholosaurs? They also wanted to go to the mysterious island, right? Seems they finally realized that they need a guide. A commission? Since you've obviously heard about my abilities, have you also happened to hear about my rates? If you're not intimidated by the price, then we can talk. Yes, I've looked into everything I need to know. As long as the trip is a success, then the commission fees won't be a problem. Oh? And where is it you want to go? The mysterious island. Just as time on that. But first, please don't misunderstand. I'm no tourist. I wish to visit the real place. You hear that? He wants to go to the island. In that case, Ko'olo's the only one for the job. But the journey to the island requires a lot more than just a guide, right? Since you want to visit the real mysterious island, then I'm sure you've also heard about the requirement for our trip, right? Yes, I know. According to the legend, only those who are willing to entrust their lives to one another will be able to reach the island together. I must reach that island, even if that means putting my life in someone else's hands. I have made up my mind. Don't waste your words on me. The way I see it, the requirement is just a way to weed out those who do not have the skills to reach the island by themselves. Y you <sighs> You say you'd put your life in somebody else's hands? <laughs> Ridiculous. Even if someone were to trust me with their life, they'd just be another burden. Let's look at it the other way around. Why would I place my life in the hands of someone whose abilities are far below mine? That is what the legend is really hinting at here. Many guides in the tribe have received commissions like this, only to end up bogged down by their incompetent clients long before reaching the destination. How do you think I reached the mysterious island? I made it because I chose to go alone. Well, um, I'm different. I'm no ordinary tourist. That doesn't make much of a difference to me. You'll give up halfway at best, which is a waste of my time. And a waste of your commission fees. I can tell you're just looking to explore something new. If that's the case, then you can find another guide in the tribe. For example... New student, over there. What's up with that guy's attitude? Paimon takes back everything nice she said about him. I have things to do now. Goodbye. Hold on, Ko'olo. What's wrong? I'm only introducing a potential client to you because I know you're a teacher. In fact, I'd say it's quite the opportunity. Never mind that for now. I don't agree with your views on the island. Uncle New taught me that... I know. You're just the same as him. You both obviously hope to prove yourselves, but still think that you have to follow the legend to the letter waiting for a cumbersome client to find you before even trying to set off. Uh, Mulani? The rare ores I brought back are proof that I've been to the island. But as for New, where's his proof? Why don't you wait until he's actually found the island before you start using his views to refute me? I'm really sorry. I just wanted to take you to see what the excitement was all about. I wasn't planning on getting into an argument with him again. Kolo seemed to harbor some kind of grudge against you, Mulani. Or maybe your teacher. I know. Quite an impressive achievement for my teacher, huh? Even the best guide in the tribe can't stop talking about him. Oh, Paimon thought you'd be more upset. Of course not. Uncle Nu has also argued with Ko'olo before. I've already heard the same words several times now. But it's hard to prove anything to him unless you've actually been to the island. That's right. 
It's just that I've always seen the journey as something super important and not to be taken lightly. I was really surprised when you asked me to be your guide today. Uh, after telling you about all the dangers with such a serious face, I didn't make you think that you're causing me trouble, did I? Actually, Byron did think about taking our invite back. No, please don't do that. Actually, that is also a part of what Uncle New taught me as a guide. The difficulty of the trip is the very first thing that needs to be clearly laid out to the group. <clears throat> if you want a chance of reaching the destination together, you must first reach a consensus on the amount of effort that will be required. I always felt that my teacher is no less skilled than Ko'olo, but Uncle Nu has never been to the island, so Ko'olo always uses that to push us down. So, as Uncle Nu's student, I've always wanted to complete the trip to prove his skills. It's a pity that I've never had the chance. But don't you have a chance now, Mulani? If you'd agree to be our guide, we're completely willing to trust you with our lives. With the help of the renowned traveler and his trusty companion, you'll definitely be able to find the mysterious island. Then you can come back and teach that Kolo a lesson. <laughs> oh, Paimon. Come on, bring it in. Aw, you're making Paimon blush. <sighs> Alrighty then. If we're gonna go, we should start preparing right away. I've already had the plans for this trip written out for some time. Come with me. <clears throat> oh, it's that scholar guy. Paimon almost forgot he was still here. Scholar guy? My name is Varamdra. Please use it. I didn't expect to see you again, Traveler and Paimon. Oh, and it's that lady, too! Hello again! Excuse me, Miss Guide. Since we've been referred to you, would it be okay for us to join your journey? I'm Mualani. Just call me by my name. As for whether or not you can come along, uh, I'm sure you've already heard the requirements. We've only just met, and I'm not sure you're cut out for this trip. The path to the mysterious island is a grueling one. Oh. I admit that after coming to Natlan, I've encountered many things outside of my field of expertise. It's understandable you're worried that we'll slow you down. So how about this? We'll set off with you as ordinary travel companions, and I'll pay you the usual commission fees but we won't officially be your clients. In other words, you needn't shoulder the responsibility of being our guide. And even if something were to happen to us, your reputation as a guide won't be tarnished as a result. How does that sound? If you accompany us, then you are a member of the team. I could never agree to such a careless deal. <laughs> oh, don't tell me you think I'm the same kind of person as Ko'olo. So you still refuse? <sighs> Fine. Kari, I'll put the more for the return trip in your backpack. Without a guide, the road ahead may be dangerous, so please don't follow me. Verandra? Now he wants to go alone? Why is this guy so obsessed with that island? Wait! Please don't do this in front of a guide. I can't let a tourist go on some dangerous journey all alone. Even my sweet mom would give me a harsh scolding if I ever let you do that. I'm so sorry for the trouble. Really. Don't say that. Although it'd be inappropriate to bring along two strangers I just met, there is another solution. How about this? Let's meet up tomorrow morning at the monument near the tribe's southeastern slope. I'll see you there. So you've decided to accept my offer? No. My plan is to use some of our time together to turn you from strangers into friends. The kind we can trust with our lives. That's your plan? <sighs> Very well, then. Wonderful. On behalf of both Barandra and I, thank you so much. Pretty sure only Mualani could come up with a plan like that. We need to get started on our preparations. Come with me. Hey, Alafa. I've got some business for you. We've been over this before. The name's Yelafath. I know. It's just that Laffa sounds so much cuter. 
Well, since you're the customer here, I guess whatever floats your boat. I need a camping tent with all the accessories. Only the best you've got. Another commission, huh? Just so you know, a full tent according to your standards is gonna be pricey. Is your client covering the bill? Uh, how much are we talking? Don't worry about the costs. I'll take care of it. Oh, but that's not right. Ahem, let's make this clear, Traveler and Paimon. We're not working together like this is a hired commission, are we? Oh, no, we're traveling as close friends who trust each other with anything. That's what I thought. Honestly, I can be a little picky when it comes to camping equipment, and I don't want my friends to be paying for me. But don't worry, it's not that expensive. We're ready, Laffa. Your total is 200,000 mora. Isn't that still a lot for you, Moolani? Just imagine us in the wilderness, okay? We can either sleep out in the open, tired and weary, or simply spend a week's worth of pocket money and completely solve that problem. I'd say that's a great deal. You call that a week's worth of pocket money? Are you rich, Mulani? That's not important. We still need to buy some equipment from another store. Come with me. Afternoon, Uncle On. <laughs> you call me uncle, but I'm old enough to be your grandfather, you know. <laughs> Because you're still young, Uncle On. Hey, can you help me find something kind of rare? I can negotiate the price. What do you say? All right. What are you looking for? A record player. Specifically, the kind that's convenient to take camping. Oh, that model is pretty rare indeed. I thought it'd be nice to keep it as a prized collectible in the shop. Ahem, <clears throat> Uncle On. <coughs> uh, just don't break it, okay? I'll even buy it back from you when you're done with it. Thanks, Uncle On. A record player? Does that mean we need to buy some records, too? Yep, and that's our next stop. Hey, Paka Paka! Mualani? Have you finally decided to release a record of your own? You'd be the first I'd sign with if I ever did, but not today. I just want to buy a record. The one you've been keeping from customers and listening to in secret. Uh huh. Uh, that's a pretty rare record, you know. Besides, I haven't even finished listening to that one yet. Maybe I can think of a way to connect you with a friend from the Masters of the Night Wind to release a record. Whoa, then we could produce some really wild tunes. You've got a deal. Nice. That's the record also accounted for. What do we need it for anyway? Well, I asked a friend from the Masters of the Night Wind for some advice once, and apparently, playing this song at night is an effective way to keep travelers safe and sound. Is that really a thing? Well, if it doesn't cost much, that's a nice way to make the trip a little more pleasant. You know how it goes, Mualani. 20,000 mora for this record. That's the best I can do. Deal. Looks like Mulani really is rich. That should be about everything we need to buy. Next is... Ooh, I'm getting kind of nervous. What's wrong, Mulani? Next, I need to find my teacher and get the map to the island. Besides the legend left by the first chief... There's also a map. Well, not just a regular map. It's more like a treasure map. It's full of strange symbols, almost like it's a part of a big puzzle. Guides must draw from their experience to decipher the map's meaning and understand the route. The chief made several copies of the map and distributed them to the first members of the tribe. The copies were to be passed down to future generations, so usually a teacher will pass their copy to their student. Which brings us to today. The day I officially ask Uncle New for his copy of the map. Whoa. Hearing that is also making Paimon feel a little nervous. Sounds like it must be a pretty serious moment. Yes, but the thought of having you two by my side somehow makes me feel a lot better. 
We won't let Uncle New down, right? That's right! Let's go and find him together! <laughs> Afternoon, Uncle New. I have a big surprise for you. A surprise? Then you must be here to finally pick up the map. <sighs> you saw right through me, as always. Did you forget that you had mentioned these two to me before? The ones who went to the Night Kingdom with you. In some sense, you could say that you've already trusted each other with your lives. It's just then. My feelings are a little complicated now. Huh? Do you think that I'm still not ready yet, Uncle New? No, I believe you are the best guide in your generation. It's just that... I'm not ready yet. After all, the journey to the mysterious island is no easy feat for any guide of the people of the springs. I'm still a little worried. Don't worry. With our help, Mualani will definitely be able to find the mysterious island. Yeah. This time I'll definitely be able to prove that Ko'olo is no better than Uncle New. Don't misunderstand. Since you've made up your minds, I won't try to stop you. It's just... Please listen to your teacher's words once more, Mualani. Our mission as guides has never been to prove anything. There is only one thing we must do. Guide tourists safely to their destination. I understand, Uncle New. In that case, you may have the map. Also, take this with you. What is it? It's a talisman. Take good care of it. You must return it to me when you get back from the mysterious island. Was this made with spinel fruit? Hmm. But for some reason, this doesn't look like a regular spinel fruit to me. Right, which is precisely why it's so effective. You really know me best, Uncle New. <sighs> All right. Traveler and Paimon, tomorrow we'll set off. Make sure you get some good rest tonight. Yay! Paimon can't wait for another adventure! Traveler, Paimon! Over here! You're here, Mulani! Oh, and those strange scholars are here, too! Good morning, you two. Morning! So when are we leaving? <laughs> Seems you're as excited as a child before the start of our journey. I just want to get down to business as soon as possible. You know this is no leisurely spring stroll, so I hope we can all act a little more professional. Don't worry, I'm a very professional guide. <clears throat> our journey to the mysterious island has officially begun. Yay! First, do you all see the statue here? Uh-huh. Is it an important clue? Well, no, it's not a clue at all. He was the first chief of the people of the Springs who came back from the mysterious island and set up this place. It's a monument. The first thing we need to do before we set off is to touch the statue and pray to our ancestors. This will make our journey to the mysterious island smoother. Is there any theoretical basis to support that claim? A theoretical basis? No, but my teacher taught me it's an essential step before heading to the mysterious island. <sighs> Very good. You didn't try to argue with me over something that you aren't knowledgeable about. That's very professional of you. Sure, but since this practice doesn't have an empirical basis, I won't be able to include it in my thesis. Come on, everyone. Greetings to my ancestors. As your descendant... I'm about to follow in your footsteps and witness your accomplishments. Allow me to depart under your gaze and return under your protective watch. It really feels like we're about to embark on a great adventure! Now, please get ready. We're going to look for the first clue. Wow, there are a lot of Koholosaurs here! As expected, the first clue is related to the Koholosaurs. When people from outside the tribe get a copy of the map, most can deduce that the first clue is related to the Koholosaurs. But they often end up looking in the wrong direction. When the first chief created the map, he left a special mark for this part. 
It's a code that the tribe uses to indicate a herd of them. So it'll be impossible to gain any leads from just finding one or two stray Koholosaurus. You're a real pro at this, Mulani. But according to the information I've been able to find, Koholosaurus don't like gathering as herds unless it's to compete for the hot springs. So let me tell you a secret that only a guide from the people of the springs would know. It so happens that wild Koholosaurus periodically gather in the valley up ahead. It's almost like how our tribe gathers together for festivals. Still, as soon as the season changes, the herd quickly disperses again. Unless you're a guide who's always running across Natlan, it would be very rare to ever witness such a thing. This is a thing? I need to note this down right away and include an explanation as a part of my thesis. According to what I've deciphered from the map, a clue is hidden deep in that valley. But to get there, won't we have to get through the herd of Koholosaurs? Hmm, we'll have to think of a way to sneak past without startling them. They're gathering together with their friends, so I'm sure they don't want to be disturbed. You mean we're going to have to walk through the Koholosaur herd? That feels a little... Ahem. <clears throat> Given we've agreed to work together, everyone should do their part. However, Caria has been attacked by Koholosaurs before, so this isn't an ideal plan for her. But it shouldn't be a problem at all for me. Let's have Caria wait here, and I'll take over all the tasks that were supposed to be entrusted to her. <laughs> no worries. We don't need everyone to go. We actually need someone to stay and look after the luggage, so we'll leave that to you two. Traveler, Paimon, please come with me. Is that so? Then that works out perfectly. And now I understand how much you care for your assistant scholar. These Koholosaurs sure seem on guard. We'll never get through. Kevin, you've already used the information provided by the map to deduce that the clue is in that valley. Why don't you simply chase them away? You're pretty strong, aren't you? First of all, the elders of the tribe have always warned us to never hurt the Koholosaurs. Doing so will almost certainly bring bad luck. And secondly, you can't just show up and intrude on others' gatherings, much less make them leave. That's just terrible. But on what basis? Okay, so can we figure out another way to enter the valley? <sighs> There must be a way to enter the valley without startling them. It'd take a while for me to come up with a solution on my own, so I'd like to ask everyone to help come up with some ideas. Let Paimon think. Oh, is there a detour or another way around? According to the map, the clue is right in the middle of the Koholosaur herd. Even if we try to approach from the other side, we'll just run into the same problem. Hmm, this is tricky. Karia, I've noticed that you only talk when you're trying to help smooth things over between Varamdra and the others. I'm sure you must have some ideas of your own, so why don't you share them with us? Me? All right. When Varamdra decided to look for leads on the Koholosaurs, I wanted to help, and so I also looked up some information about the creatures. I discovered something very interesting. We thought that the Koholosaurs relied on their hearing to track their prey, but they also possess a very keen sense of smell. But I'm not sure how useful that information is. Oh. Oh, that was actually very useful, Miss Karia. You can just call me Karia. In that case, please stay here and keep an eye on the luggage. Traveler, Paimon, come with me. I've got an idea. Found it! What's this? The key to making our way through the herd. If the Koholosaurs have a keen sense of smell, then even if we try to sneak around and stay out of sight, they'll still notice us once we get close enough. But this plant can help us solve that problem, because its fragrance is very similar to the scent of a Koholosaur. We can apply the plant's extract to our bodies and trick their sense of smell. So we're gonna... Rub plant juice on ourselves? Don't worry, it's also good for your skin. Oh, Paimon feels all wet and slimy. 
But this actually does smell like a Koholosaur. Perfect. Okay, let's try to make our way through again. We must be getting close. Look, a bunch are gathering around that rock. What are they doing? Hmm, maybe when things start to get boring, they gather together and talk about something fun? <laughs> Too bad I can't understand what they're saying. I, uh, but Paimon thought guides from the people of the springs could understand Koholosaurs. Sounds like someone has been trying to trick you. True, they were definitely trying to scam us. Uh, huh? Do you see that on the rock? It looks like some kind of drawing. I've heard that there is a type of moss that changes color when it reacts to the biological signals released by Koholosaurus. But to trigger that sort of reaction, you'd need a huge number of Koholosaurus. That must be the clue! Should we take a picture? Oh, the flash might disturb them. Let me try to copy it down. So we've passed the first stage of the journey now, right? I see. Had we chosen to drive the Koholosaurus off, then we never would have found this lead. Seems there was a logical basis for everything you said after all. Has he always been this way, Miss Caria? He's just obsessed with his research. That's all. At least this has shown that my judgment is correct. I've proven my trustworthiness. And so, there should be no need for us to argue next time. Yes, I understand. And I suppose that'll help us avoid wasting time. Ooh, Alani really knows how to lead our group. Next, we'll need to use the lead we found to uncover our next destination. Now, what does this pattern represent? Hard to tell. Paimon certainly doesn't have any idea what it's trying to get at. Aha, I got it. Though the lines are kind of rough, I can still see that they represent the boundaries between the water and the land at Jade Skirt Knoll. We can use this to fill in the hole on the map and... find our next destination. Really? You got all that just from some rough lines? Well, intuition is also a part of it. Maybe I've just seen too many maps as a guide, and now it's easier for me to pick up on patterns like that. All right, break time is over. Let's get ready to move. Okay, this is the place. So... Where do we go next? I'm not completely sure yet. The map seems to indicate there's a mechanism here that crosses the water. But I still need to think about what these lines might be referring to. I knew it! My theory was correct! Sounds like he's got something to say again. If you have any suggestions, then please feel free to share. I believe the mechanism that the lines are indicating is a spirit way. Hmm, that is a possibility. But I don't remember anyone from the tribe setting up a spirit door around here. According to my theory, it might not have been set up by humans. The dragons living in that land also used a similar device, long before the humans. Speaking of which, the spirit doors your tribe uses may have been built imitating the dragon ones. Oh, I remember now. Uncle New did mention this possibility to me before. After learning about the legend, I realized that it was connected to my research. And so, I looked up a lot of related information. Even though I haven't found an exact route to the mysterious island, I'm fairly certain I've deduced the geographical features of the island's surrounding areas. Firstly, it's at an intersection between water and land. And secondly, there should be a high concentration of phlogiston. My research indicates that the spirit way was originally a natural phenomenon caused by the flow of phlogiston. Therefore, the area must contain many potential spirit ways, and the dragons who lived here in ancient times may have left behind some devices to control them. Oh, amazing! Now it all makes sense. Now everyone's contributing to the team. 
You flatter me. If my theory is correct, we should already be very close to the mysterious island. Once you've unlocked the mechanism, we'll be able to derive the island's location. All right. Then let's start searching for the dragon's spirit door. That's just a quick and easy name. I won't be able to include it in my thesis. Given the dragons used the device long before the humans, we should stick with a name that references no human concepts. Calling it a phlogiston node would be much more appropriate. Uh, then let's start searching for the phlogiston node. Speaking of which, what does it look like exactly? If I'm not mistaken... <gasps> look that way! Whoa! It started glowing! This should be it, right? Looks like we can activate it once we get close enough. The light does remind me of a spirit way. But according to the map, there should be two more phlogiston nodes. Let's keep searching, everyone. <sighs> we finally found all of them. Great work, everyone. Okay, now first, we need to figure out how to control this thing. Hmm. Its qualities are very similar to that of a man-made device, but it doesn't seem as intuitive to me. Is there something wrong? See, look at this. After activating a normal spirit door, we could just go ahead and use it. But this one requires someone to stay and keep operating it here. Also, according to the map, we need to activate the mechanism and switch between different phlogiston nodes to change the path of the spirit way. If we don't operate the nodes properly, then the people on the spirit way will come tumbling from the sky. Isn't that super dangerous? In theory, the process should be very safe, but only if the three phlogiston nodes are each being operated by someone. Do you think you'd be able to operate it? I just tried, and it clearly requires more skill than a typical spirit door. Though I've never tried before, I've read a lot of information and theoretically should be able to properly control it. Let me give it a try. Huh? But in theory, this shouldn't happen. If Varandra can control it, and that also rules out me. Okay, well, how about you? After all the adventures he's been on, handling something like this should be easy peasy. All right, then it'll be up to the traveler to stay here and operate the phlogiston node. I'll go activate the mechanism. I'll let you know when we need to switch nodes. Just make sure you quickly head to the corresponding node, and we should make it safely. Wait, but... Handling it this way sounds even more dangerous, Mulani. Don't worry. It looks like the spirit ways are all above the water. I'm pretty good at swimming, so I'm not afraid if I end up falling in. But it's so high! And you'll be falling so fast! If we don't manage to reach a note in time or if we make a mistake, there's a lot that can happen! Do you still remember the promise we made before we left, Paimon? Only those who can trust each other with their lives can reach the mysterious island. Since you two are willing to trust me, then naturally, I'm willing to trust you. Alrighty. Please be careful. Oh, that was perfect. You were amazing, Mulani! There were a couple of moments Paimon thought it was over. <laughs> I'm confident I could do it all over again. Wait, why are the phlogiston nodes no longer lit? Oh no, you're right! It appears the phlogiston nodes here need to automatically recharge. Once they're activated, they'll be unusable for some time. In that case, no matter what happens next, we have to seize our chance. Otherwise, who knows how long we'll have to wait for another shot. Do you hear that? The weather's getting gloomy, and a bunch of whirlpools just appeared in the water! Yes, we need to get to higher ground and take a look. Hey, look over there! Whoa, there's a giant whirlpool over there! Yep, and that's our next stop. Huh? What do you mean? The info I deciphered from the map points to only one possibility. To reach the mysterious island, we must enter that massive whirlpool. No way. 
Forgive me for being frank, but as a guide of the people of the Springs, I'm sure you understand the danger of such a vortex even better than we do. Yes, I know. But whether it's the information deciphered from the map, or the direction of the spirit way that I observed in the air, everything points to the path ahead being hidden in that whirlpool. And what if you're wrong? Parandra. I... I'm not trying to be unreasonable. Unfortunately, I'm very knowledgeable in this area. The spirit ways must have affected the nearby bodies of water and lowered the water level. That's why the whirlpools appeared. At this rate, some of the land that was once underwater will soon reappear at the surface and see the light of day again. Don't you think that sounds more like the definition of a mysterious island? So, our goal should be the shallow waters. If we enter that vortex, the undercurrents will drag us to the bottomless abyss. Uh, he does seem to have a point. I can't find any evidence to refute your claim for the moment, but I still trust my judgment. Then it seems like it's time for our collaboration to come to an end. But didn't we all agree to trust each other? I have reached this conclusion based on my field of expertise, and I cannot deny it, even if you try to convince me otherwise. From now on, let us each choose our own way. No, I refuse. You? Letting your clients separate themselves from the group in the middle of a journey will result in the worst luck possible. I will not agree to that. Then we can implement the plan I proposed at the very beginning. You're not my guide, and as such, you don't have to take responsibility for me. Oh, but you can't do that once you've traveled together as a group. If you were to leave now, we'll all be hit with bad luck. It's now beyond both our control. How about this? You and Karia wait here. We'll go first and investigate the whirlpool. I know you like to explain everything with theories and logic, so let me build my case first and then I'll come back to convince you. Well, um... Traveler, Paimon, let's get going. Whoa, the massive whirlpool is up ahead. Just the thought of going in there is making Paimon dizzy. Do you also think that this is a reckless decision? Um, well... It's okay, that's completely normal. Actually, I completely understand how Varamdra feels. This is just how it is to be a guide. The tribe's experiences passed down from generation to generation are what give us the ability to guide our guests through hardships. This gives us the power to decide which way we should go. But it also means that we must bear the consequences of our mistakes in judgment, which could be quite dire this time. Although I'm pretty convinced that all the leads we have collected are pointing us to the whirlpool, I still don't know what awaits us inside. If the scholars still choose to reject my plan, I won't have the confidence to ask them to only do as I say. The same goes for the two of you. You are the commissioners, so if you think this is too risky, then it's perfectly reasonable if you want to end the trip here. The good news is that I know the way back to the tribe very well. Mulani? Traveler. That's right. You've trusted us before, Mulani. Now it's our turn to trust you. Besides, it's gonna take more than a whirlpool to scare the two of us. We all managed to make it back from the Night Kingdom. After an experience like that, what's so scary about being sucked into a whirlpool? Aw, Paimon. <laughs> Come on, bring it in again. All right! Let's investigate this whirlpool and see if we can gather any info to convince that scholar. Matters of luck aside, he definitely knows a lot about geography and we'll need him on the team. I know, it's just that we can't see much from here. I'll get closer to the water and have another look. Wait a sec, is it just Paimon or does the whirlpool seem to be getting smaller? You're right. Maybe it's just like the phlogiston nodes and can only be active for a certain amount of time. That means we need to hurry. Miss Guide, we have a problem. Karia, what are you doing here? 
I tried to persuade him, but Varandra insisted on verifying his theory first. He said that the water to the south was about to be shallow enough to wade through, but after he took a few steps, the water suddenly began to surge and he was swept away. I'm not much of a swimmer, so I came to call for help. Oh, why did this have to happen now? Can we still make it into the whirlpool? No time to hesitate. I'll get in the water and rescue him. Just tell me which way he went, Karia. Karia <coughs> <sighs> <sighs> came and found us just in time. Oh, there they are! Varamdra, thank goodness you're all right. Thank you so much, Miss Guide. Oh, didn't I tell you to wait for me? <coughs> Judging by the changes in the water's surface, the path to the mysterious island wouldn't be around for long. I, I didn't want to miss this opportunity. It's just... I, I didn't expect my calculations to be wrong. It seems you were right. Right, who knows if we can make it back in time now? Huh? All the whirlpools have disappeared! Seems we missed our chance. Why would you give up on such an opportunity to come rescue me? How can you say that? It's already bad enough that you had to be left behind. Do you think I'd let anyone in my group drown? <sighs> I'm really sorry. Don't feel guilty, Karia. I think if I reactivate the nodes, that will cause the whirlpools to reappear. The only problem is that we still don't know exactly when we'll be able to do that. It's already getting late now, and we've been on the move for a whole day. As your guide, I suggest we make camp first and have a good meal. We can talk about the other stuff tomorrow. Now that you mention it, Paimon is feeling a little hungry. Hey, Paimon's stomach can be very sensible! It won't interrupt while everyone's busy solving puzzles! We have plenty of tasty things to eat. Let's just find a suitable spot to make camp. Hmm, I like that place right over there. Is this the spot? Let Paimon and the Traveler help set up the tent. Go ahead, I'll take care of the fire. Oh, and here's a little camping tip. It's best to set the tent upwind from the campfire. What do you think? This is a specialty dish I learned to make that's perfect for camping. Mm-hmm. It really hits the spot. You're a great cook, Mulani. Karia helped out quite a bit, so she deserves some credit, too. No, no. I'm just happy I was able to help out. Uh-huh. Oh, what was that sound? Oh, it's scary to camp out at night. Don't worry. Remember the record player I bought? Let me go turn it on. Listen. Not bad, right? Wow, so it really works! Paimon thought you were just playing it for good luck! My parents told me that most of the valuable experience from our ancestors is hidden in various customs. It's always better to trust our traditions. Huh. Guess that makes sense. In a sense... This trip to the mysterious island is also a custom left behind by the first chief of the tribe. I wonder what kind of experience he's trying to share with us. Yeah, Paimon would like to know too. Even though I've heard my parents tell stories since I was little, I actually don't know too much about him. It's said that he was the first person to make a map of Natlan, and even the first person to become friends with the Koholosaurus. That sounds pretty amazing. Yeah, there isn't a place in Natland that he didn't visit. Even the most remote parts bear his footprints. Even now, no one has even come close to his reputation and status as a guide. His trip to the mysterious island is the most legendary of all his accomplishments. But oddly enough, after returning from the mysterious island, he laid aside his yearning for adventure and chose to settle down. That's how the tribe was founded. It really makes me wonder what the journey meant to him. Hmm. Hmm? Uh, <clears throat> uh a, a, a camping trip shouldn't be this stuffy and quiet. 
Everyone needs to help make it more lively. How about this? Before we rest for the night, let's have a bonfire party. If we're going to go plunging into that whirlpool tomorrow, then wouldn't it be best to try to rest and conserve energy now? Now's not the time to be a party pooper. You ought to agree to ideas from the one who rescued you today. Yeah, she's right! All right. So what do the rules stipulate for a bonfire party? Rules? <laughs> a bonfire doesn't have any rules. Everyone just needs to have a good time. How about this? I'll ask everyone a question, and then we'll take turns saying what's on our mind. Okay, sounds fun enough. So, for the first question, what's the purpose of a journey? Oh, we were just talking about this. Let's hear everyone's ideas, and maybe we can figure out what the first chief was thinking back when he made the trip. Paimon can go first. If you ask Paimon what the purpose of a journey is, It'd definitely be about treasure, and all kinds of delicious food, and, most importantly, it's about making the trip together with your companions. Yes, I can't agree more. Okay, next person. Uh, how about you, Traveler? You sure are taking your time thinking about it. Oh, I get it. You must have passed through many nations before making it to Natlan, right? It's quite possible that your experience traveling is more than what I have as a guide. It's understandable that you can't explain it off the top of your head. Why don't I circle back to you later? You can tell me once you have a clear answer. Next, let's hear what Karia has to say. Me? If you ask about my travels... Well, this is actually my first time traveling so I don't have anything useful to contribute. That doesn't matter. This is a party around the bonfire, not some research seminar. All right. If I had to say what the meaning of a journey is, I'd say it provides an opportunity for true companionship. Before you reach the destination, you don't need to think about anything outside the trip itself. As long as you stick together with your companions, you won't have any trouble to worry about. Yeah, I get it. I'm on cue! Uh-huh. I hope that didn't sound too silly. <clears throat> All right. Now it's Varamdra's turn. All right, if you insist. In my opinion, our goals and dreams in life are all in pursuit of what we call results. The so-called journey is but a path that leads to these results. So, the greatest meaning of a journey lies in managing to find the right result. Not sure I completely get what you mean. There's nothing difficult to understand. It's the same as the decision of your first chief. He must have discovered enough valuable results after visiting the mysterious island to decide that he should end his journey. Once you've achieved the results you want, any additional journeys would become all but meaningless. Um... Before coming here, someone had stolen the results of one of my research projects. All that person had to do was sign his name on my achievements, and he was able to take all of the honors. All my effort vanished into the air as though it never existed. Do you understand now, Miss Guide? Without results, the journey is meaningless. I sympathize with your situation, but I'm afraid I can't agree with your take. I don't need your sympathy. As long as I can reach the mysterious island and find the correct results, my pain and struggles will become just another insignificant part of the process. What happened during the day already proved that my theories were wrong, so I'm willing to trust your judgment. I apologize for our previous argument. I must make it to the mysterious island, and if I have to entrust my life to someone else to achieve that goal, then so be it! Liz. That actually supposed to be an apology? Because it sounded kind of awkward. Actually, there is a saying among the guides of the people of the springs. If the goal of the journey was to reach the destination, then you should have never left the house to begin with. Because the final destination of every journey 
is your home. It would be disrespectful of my duties as a guide if I were just taking tourists straight to where they wanted to go. It's my hope to also make everyone feel happy along the way to their destination. That is what I would truly call a journey. And that is my answer. Just as you don't agree with me, I can't agree with your point of view either. I'm not too worried about that. After all, another purpose of traveling is to help people understand each other better. What sort of logic is that? All right, that's it for this round. Since it's still early, how about we tell some horror stories next? Huh? Oh, now Paimon's scared. Just in time. I was about to go look for you. What the? You already caused the whirlpools to reappear again? We're in luck. The phlogiston nodes were recharged by dawn. I had Karia and Varamdra control the nodes this time, and we were able to quickly unlock the mechanism. We were practicing all morning so they could get the hang of controlling them. Oh, it seems after apologizing, you've already become trusted members of the team. Is now really the time to be teasing us? Don't forget that the whirlpools won't last all day. He's right. We should really hurry over to the massive whirlpool again. Even though we had this discussion yesterday, I still want to double check. You all trust me, right? You bet! Okay, then let's go. <coughs> Why am I accidentally swallowed some water? <coughs> So scary. Uh, what is this place? I can't believe it. There are subterranean caverns under the water. Mulani was right. Let's see where this cave leads. Come with me. Is that lava up ahead? It appears these caves were formed by volcanic activity. I see. Then the spirit waves were affecting lava deep underground. Altering the lava's flow created temporary holes, which allowed us to follow the water's current and enter this underground space. Yes, it can all be explained in theory now. Are all scholars from Sumeru like this? I'm hard to say. But can there be an island in this kind of underground space? It appears we haven't reached our destination yet. Let's keep going, everyone. What a maze. There's lava everywhere. Oh, which way are we supposed to go now? Let's look around together and see what we can find. Very well. It would indeed be useful to collect some environmental samples here. There are plants growing here? There's nothing unusual about that. This is spinel fruit, which often grows around places with lava. Wait, it is a little strange. This isn't ordinary spinel fruit. It's the same as the one on this talisman. Isn't that the talisman your teacher gave you? Yes. In which case, could Uncle New have been here before? But he clearly told me that he'd never made it to the mysterious island. Hmm, I'll be sure to ask him about it once we get back. There's so much lava, and it's getting pretty hot. The lava here doesn't look very stable. I'm afraid we can't stay here for long. From here, the light seems to be getting brighter. Speaking of which, where is that light coming from? A distant light. Wait, there seems to be a mark that matches that on the map. Miss Guide. It seems Barandra has also discovered something. Do you see that golden light in the distance? I'm positive that's the mysterious island. That's where we should go next. Really? I'm a scholar from the Academia Spontama Darshan. I specialize in ores and minerals. When I first heard about the legend of the mysterious island, I took note of its description. One exaggerated description I heard was that it's an entire island that shines like gold. What it was actually referring to was an extremely rare mineral known as vulcanite. 
Under certain environmental conditions, large amounts of lava are quickly cooled, which then results in this ore. Since the ore can't be moved in time, it begins to accumulate, resulting in the alluring golden glow. If I'm not mistaken, there'll be a large pool of lava up ahead, and the mysterious island will be floating on the lava. An entire island of vulcanite ore! So you mean we really found the mysterious island? Rejoice! Even a small piece of that ore will be priceless! Really? Then let's hurry! Wait, Paimon. We should head back now. Uh, why? What are you saying? This map is covered with symbols and riddles, but there's one thing that's written clearly. When you see the golden light, then go the opposite way. What you just said may be correct, but that golden place isn't the island that my ancestors once visited. Are you joking? You expect me to turn back now? But Mualani's judgment has always been right. If she says head back, then we should head back. We can't be fooled by the thought of treasure. You thought I'm after treasure? <laughs> Oh, he's acting weird again. After my previous findings were stolen, I began a new area of research. And this ore is the core of my research. As long as I can bring this ore back, my theories will be proven beyond any doubt, and I will be able to reclaim everything I have lost. To me, this ore is the result that must be obtained. Otherwise, all those hardships along the way will be rendered completely meaningless. Don't you understand? As we agreed before, please trust my judgment. Why? Are you wary of me? Now that we've confirmed that the legendary treasure really exists, you don't want outsiders to take it, do you? She's not that kind of person, Varamdra. The result is right before my very eyes. I won't give up here. Oh no! He went running in! How can he do that? Not good. We must stop him. Uh, is it just Paimon or is the ground shaking? What the? Where did these monsters come from? These monsters. Looks like the lava here is becoming active again. Misguide. Varamdra, he... He'll be trapped by the lava. We need to hurry and take care of these monsters. The lava is rising. Varamdra. Traveler, Paimon, please take care of Karya. I'll be right back. What are you doing, Mulani? I can use my surfboard on the lava for a short period of time, but it will be a lot spicier than surfing on water. But that's way too risky! Okay, then. We'll take care of things here. It's right there! I'm almost there! Look carefully. You can't get through the lava. You'll die if you try to make your way forward. Why don't you just give up? Why don't I give up? Well, I might not be able to do it, but what about you? Me? You have the ability to move over the lava. If you try, maybe you can reach the island and earn the highest honor for a guide. That way, you'll have the results you need to prove yourself, and even Ko'olo won't be able to question your abilities anymore. You want to know why I won't give up, but I'm asking why you'd give up such an opportunity. The lava is rising! If I take this risk, then how will the others get back? Did you forget? I already gave you my answer. You! Come with me. No! They're back! I've brought him back. He's fortunate that he wasn't seriously hurt. Oh, thank goodness. Thank you so much, Miss Guide. You're welcome. It's getting dangerous here, so we need to find a way out. No, I refuse! I can still stand! Let me go back! Seriously? How can you be so childish at a time like this? Varamdra! Whoa. I've always believed that you're the most talented person I've ever met. Even if your research was stolen and you didn't get any credit, I never doubted it. I believe that even if you won't obtain any results this time, you'll still succeed in your new research. Because no one can take your talent away. So, 
I won't allow my dearest senior to die here because of his own stubbornness. Kari. She's finally opening up. And it seems like she's just the person we need to talk some sense into him. Mulani, the lava is almost here! Don't panic. It seems like the trick that Uncle New taught me is finally going to be put to use. Where did all these Koholosaurs come from? No time to explain. Just get on. Got it, got it! <laughs> oh, my mind accidentally choked on some water again while riding the Koholosaur. Everyone okay? Let's take a head count. One, two, three, four, five. Whew, we're all here. We escaped danger and made it back alive. That's what I call good luck. I think our fortune can only get better from now on. Oh, really? What's the point? We still didn't reach the mysterious island. Hey, don't look so depressed. You'll scare our good luck away. Actually, according to the map, we still have one more leg of the journey. Oh? Then which way should we go? Wait, aren't we back where we started? Come on, let's go to the statue. So, what's the point of coming back here again? <gasps> here, look! Some hidden words appeared on the statue after I touched it. Really? Let Paimon try! The hidden inscriptions disappeared! These must have been the words the first chief left for those that would come after him. In that case, the mysterious island from the legend is actually where the people of the springs are living now! I remember now that the elders once told me our tribe was originally founded on a small island. Later, the coastlines changed, allowing the island to become what it is today. The journey to the mysterious island starts exactly where it ends. Yeah, I think I understand the choice he made now. The golden glow is an indicator of when the lava will periodically erupt. Hmm. If that's the case, the principle of vulcanite formation implies that it will only appear at the start of fierce lava activity, and the flowing lava will quickly swallow it and make it all disappear without a trace. This means that there's zero possibility of ever bringing the ore back. Are the results I've been chasing all this time only an illusion that can be seen from far away? Parandra... Our journey is not yet over. As we agreed, please come back to the people of the springs with me. Then we'll officially complete this journey. Fine. I suppose that would also count as some kind of result. Don't be so down. I have a feeling that the next answer I'm looking for will also be useful to you. I don't remember, Sal. There's still something important we need to ask Mulani's teacher about. Uncle Nu, we're back! Ah, uh, Mulani, it's good to see you again. I always knew you'd return safe and sound. Uncle, I've completed the journey to the mysterious island. I'm here to return the talisman. But you still have a question you wish to ask me, right? Yes. You've been there before, haven't you? Yes, I have. If that's the case, then you've gone on the same journey. But why didn't you tell anyone? Because I made a choice. A choice? Did you notice that the hidden inscriptions on the stone tablet disappeared as soon as you finished reading them? Oh yeah, you're right. There's a special paint on the statue that would change color when it comes into contact with volcanic dust. Only those who have been to that underground space will be contaminated by the dust and be able to see the hidden message. But once the dust starts to wear off, the hidden inscription will disappear again. And this is the choice that the first chief left to us. If you choose to boast about your deeds, you will receive the highest honor, but the legend of the mysterious island would be destroyed as well. If you choose to remain silent, 
then the mysterious island will remain a legend and continue to attract the next generation of young guides to rise to the challenge. In the end, my companions and I all chose the latter. Oh, I get it now. But not being able to tell anyone after accomplishing such a feat. People like Ko'olo will still look down on you. Are you really okay with that? But have you noticed that Ko'olo, who claims to have been to the island, hasn't actually completed the trip? What? Right. Hyman remembers that Ko'olo said that he went to the mysterious island alone. But there's no way he could have been able to use the spirit ways. He deliberately recommended the client to find Mualani, probably because he thought she wouldn't be able to reach the mysterious island. That way, Mulani wouldn't be able to expose him. As guides, we are not adventurers, let alone treasure hunters. The greatest responsibility of a guide is to take the client to their destination safely. But in the process, we also gain much skill and experience at overcoming danger. This allows us to go to places that no one else can reach and even find treasures that no one else can find. Many guides gradually lose sight of their true beliefs and intentions in the process and end up becoming like Kolo. They end up becoming more like thieves who would rush to the other side of the lava lake regardless of the consequences, rather than good guides who would turn around and save their friends. This is why the first chief left behind the legend and the map to lure younger generations into taking up the challenge, thereby teaching them everything he had learned. Aside from me, many other tribe members have also traveled to the mysterious island. And just like me, they understood the first chief's intentions. So they've also made pacts with their companions, choosing to give up the results that would prove themselves and give the younger generation the chance to continue the challenge. You've all given up on the results. Sir, I've given up on merely one result. I haven't given up on everything. Given her talent and qualifications, Mualani was well within her rights to choose the top-ranked guide Kohlo as her teacher, but she chose me. I believe I was able to cultivate such an outstanding student and witness her completion of the legendary challenge precisely because I didn't become someone like Koolo. If instead of looking at one single journey, we look at my entire career as a guide, I'd say I have not returned empty-handed. What about you? Hmm. Karia? I've come up with a new research topic. Would you like to continue working as my assistant? You're the same as always, Varamdra. You always have to find evidence before coming to a conclusion. I... <sighs> In any case, I can't give you an answer right now. Karia! Because you haven't prepared the proposal yet. Shouldn't you finish that first before recruiting assistants? How could you forget? Ah, uh, yes, of course. I'll certainly prepare all the necessary details. But I've always found your proposals fascinating, so I'm sure I won't be able to turn you down this time either. Karia, given that I have been presented with new evidence, I've come up with a very general theory. I can use the ideas from the Chief's speech to express it. Perhaps the treasure I'm seeking has been by my side the entire time. No. To, to be more precise, it's been with me even before I set out on this journey. I understand, Varandra. It appears this guest has also found his answer. It seems he's finally put two and two together. There's nothing to worry about. It's just like Karia said. I can start some new research and reclaim everything I've lost. But it seems he's still as stubborn as before. Now. It's your turn to make the choice, Mulani. But, Uncle Nu, I'm sure anyone who can complete the journey to the island would make the same choice, right? Very good. Then there's nothing more I can teach you. Here, take this talisman again. You can pass it on to your student in the future. 
Looks like it's also our time to say goodbye. You've taken great care of us throughout our journey. As thanks, I'm also willing to keep the journey a secret. Then remember, the next time you come to visit the people of the Springs, you know where to find friends for help. Friends? I suppose we are theoretically friends now, yes. When I publish my next paper, I'll be sure to add you to my list of acknowledgements. Well, that's one way to thank someone. Then Verandra and I will be taking our leave. I truly hope we'll get to see you all again someday. Okay, bye-bye! You're back already. So, as news student, did you manage to find the mysterious island? Uh, what are you doing here all of a sudden? Well, I found something even more precious than the island. Two friends that I can trust with my life. You... <laughs> Seems you really learned a lot from New about how to make yourself feel better. I knew it. How could anyone ever reach the island with so many hindrances? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> huh, what? Why are you all looking at me like that? The elders of the tribe also gave me that same look. What's that supposed to mean? New. I've already proven that I'm stronger than you. I've been to even more dangerous places and found far more precious treasures. I've even been to the mysterious island. Why do you still look at me as if my words don't bother you at all? Kolo, even if you had never been to the island, no one would deny your abilities. But as for what we would deny about you, <laughs> only you can find the answer to that. Me? <laughs> So now, our trip to the mysterious island is officially finished, right? Yeah, but I have one more place I want to show you. Come with me. This is the place. From what I've heard, if we take a group photo here, it'll bring us good luck. I'm sure of it. What made you think of taking a group photo? Well, we completed our trip to the mysterious island together, so of course we need a memento to keep. <sighs> You've earned the greatest honor for a guide. Yet, you can only walk away with a photo of your friends. You're pretty amazing, Mulani. You really sacrificed a lot for your tribe. Would you call it a sacrifice? Mm, I don't really think so. Actually, after hearing Uncle New's answer, I have this vague feeling that... After all that we've been through together, the results don't matter anymore. Oh, it's kind of hard to explain. I don't know if you get me or not. No, I get it. Traveler. So that's your answer, huh? To the meaning of a journey? It's a good one. Then let's make this group photo yet another part of your journey. Yep, Paimon's ready! Three, two, one. Kaholasaur! Are you here to help find the baby Saurians? And I'm Toba. You must be the helpers that we've been waiting for. Uh, it's nice to meet you too, but we're just passing through. Oh, but Uncle Sanka said he was going to send some of his friends over to help us. You sure he didn't mean you? Yeah, sorry. Whatever this is about, it sounds like you've got the wrong end of the stick. Wrong end of the stick? Darn it! We've been tricked, Hoonie. I should have known that Glasses Guy was a con artist. What are we supposed to do about the baby Saurians now? Time's running out. It's okay, Hoonie. Don't worry. 
Well, why don't you tell us what happened with these baby Saurians, huh? There's been a lot of unrest in the tribe lately, and my dad's Saurian got injured. Her name's Nana, and she has three little babies. After what happened to Nana, her babies were so scared that they ran off and hid. I'm really worried about them, so I decided to go look for them. If Nana is your dad, Saurian, why isn't he the one looking for them? My dad's one of the elders, so he's busy getting ready for Turnfire Night. It's a really important ceremony, more important than this, anyway. I'm not supposed to be out here either, but I snuck out without telling him. I didn't think it would take very long, but then that guy we ran into made us tell him loads of stories, and it wasted so much time. Yeah, he was so selfish. He doesn't have a heart. It's all right. Don't let him get to you. We're here now and we'll help you because we care a lot, don't we, Traveler? They should be. I already managed to find their tracks and it seems like they're hiding on the cliff. Really? Wow! Thank you so much, Mr. Traveler and Miss Paimon. Awesome! You gotta be careful out on the cliffs, though. They're really steep. Even grown-ups have trouble climbing them. Gurney said the baby Saurians are on the cliff, so let's find a way up! We found them! Wait, but what's that other... A how? Well, if it isn't the gruesome twosome who wormed their way into our servant circle of friends. <laughs> Still awestruck from the last time we met? Would that be why you hastily scrambled up here to pay your respects the moment you saw us? <laughs> I suppose we can't blame you. Such is the spell that our majesty casts on our minions. Very well. You heathens leave us no choice. <laughs> the almighty dragon lord, Kahul Howe, shall grant you the audience that you seek. Come, pucker up. You may now kiss our feet. Wait, aren't you like Kanichi's sidekick? What the heck are you going on about? You're somehow managing to be even more annoying than the last time we met. Silence! How are you calling Psychic? We are the Dragon Supreme, sovereign ruler of the Nation of Flame. We shall have you know that last time, were it not for Kanich's earnest pleading on your behalf, you would have received not a single word of mercy. Oh, come on, you talk big, but Kanich clearly has you under lock and key. <laughs> That's more like it. If you must know, our humble servant begged us to investigate an abyss incident near Hoitzitlan, and we chose to grant his request. Abyss incident? See this little lizard? Its mother, a medium-sized lizard, came under the influence of abyssal power. In her confusion, she attacked my servant's tribe, then assailed her own offspring. Yikes. So how is she doing now? She was but a lowly bug fighting against the power of the abyss. Naturally, she has departed for the Night Kingdom. <laughs> Such a fragile creature. Apparently, she ended her struggle by leaping from a cliff. Leaping from a cliff? My dear anemic flying ant, as addled with questions as your head may be, Please keep them to yourself, and wipe that absurd expression off your face. We are the almighty dragon lord, Kahula Howe, not a wish-granting fountain. Anemic flying ant! You! Just you wait, two can play at the ugly nickname game. Hmm, we sense a faint abyssal energy. <laughs> An evil sorcerer must be lurking nearby, but they are well hidden. If you encounter any suspicious outlanders, be sure to give them a robust interrogation. Suspicious outlanders? Wait, are you mocking us? Ha! <laughs> How dare you cast aspersions on your ruler, heathen! You're just lucky that our servant has such vile taste in friends. 
Otherwise, we would beat you black and blue, and then purple, then black again! <laughs> if you're not here to kiss my feet, then get out of my sight. Do not impede the work of the almighty Dragon Lord, Kahulahau! The potty mouth on that guy! Paimon is furious! Still, good to know about the Abyss Threat, huh? Wasn't expecting that. Uh, let's not get sidetracked. We should take care of Hootie's request first. Wow, you're back already? That was so fast. Uh, I'm so glad that the babies are all right. Thank you both so much. Now we can finally go home and stop worrying about them. You're welcome. Pizza cake! You're not from Natland, right? Because your clothes look different than ours. Hey, you must be tired after all that climbing. You should come take a rest at my house. Yeah, please come. I promise you'll get a big Scions at the Canopy welcome. We love having guests, and you're really nice people. Not like Glasses Guy. By the sound of it, Glasses Guy wasn't from Natlan either, right? Uh-huh. Well, his clothes sure weren't. You know what? Now that I think about it, there was something really fishy about him. Really? Maybe he was the suspicious outlander that Ahal mentioned. Sure, if you're interested. Oh, let me think. How did the conversation go again? Oh, please, mister. I've told you so many stories already. When are you going to help me find the baby Saurians? Just one more story. One more, I swear. Why don't you tell me more about that ball of fire? I heard that there was a huge transparent ball of fire that used to burn 500 years ago, a thousand years ago, maybe even further back than that. Oh, you mean turn fire. That's where the ancient name Mollipo comes from. Oh, wow. So it was the origin of an ancient name. That's impressive. Uh-huh. There's a story behind every ancient name. The legend goes that the Turnfire first appeared in the era of the Grand Alliance. It was used by the tyrant Oj Khan to rule over Natlan and oppress anyone who opposed him. Turnfire is different from normal fire. If you get set on fire with it, you'll feel a horrible burning pain from behind you, but you won't die from it right away. And whatever you do, you mustn't turn back to look at it. Why? What happens if you turn back? As soon as you turn around, poof! You get burned to a crisp. Well, good golly gee. I mean, it's one thing to singe someone's clothes, but burning people alive? That is a big no-no in my book. Right? How nasty is it to burn someone from behind and not even let them turn around to look? Ochkon really was an evil tyrant. Yes, shocking behavior. Now, let me guess. Eventually, a valiant hero came to save the day? That's usually how these stories go. Good guess, Uncle Glasses. Seems like you really know your stuff. The hero was called Yupanki. He's the ancestor of our tribe. Mm-hmm. Yupanki was friends with Ochkon the Tyrant, and also Shibalanke, the first Pyro Archon. He was working as an ordnance officer for the Grand Alliance at the time. He didn't like how Uch Khan was such a cruel tyrant, so he stole the Turnfire and threw it at the Uch Khan's army. The soldiers couldn't defend against it, and they all got turned to ash. And that's how our ancestors set our people free. But just as he was about to leave the city, he thought he heard Uch Khan calling out to him from behind. It caught him off guard, and he turned around to look. But Uch Khan wasn't there. 
All he saw was a city burned black, an army in ruins, and giant flames reaching up into the sky. A split second later, the flames he saw burst out from inside his eyes and swallowed him up. All it took was a single glance. As soon as he looked back, he was burned to a crisp. The question is, was this the price he paid for stealing the turn fire, or the price of turning back? Nobody knows the answer, but the fire that consumed you, Punky, burned more fiercely than any other. It burned for a hundred days until it burned a hole right through the ley lines. And then, the flame dropped into the deathly dark night kingdom, where it still burns to this day. The grown-ups say that it lights up the path that leads to the next life, but for the dead to be reborn, they have to accept the flames and be purified by the fire first. It's like a final look back at your life, where you have to answer for everything you did. Anyway, that's the story of Yuponki's turn fire. Ah, a fine parable indeed. So, is it true? Is it really possible to find this fire in the Night Kingdom? I don't know. I think it's just a story. Either way, I assume this name has been passed down in your tribe ever since? Sure has. It went to Burkina, the hero that we celebrate on Turnfire Night. But that was 500 years ago. Yeah, and now it belongs to Kanich. So we often call him Malipo Kanich. Kanich, huh? All right, Uncle Glasses, that's enough stories. Now, can you please go find the baby Saurians for us like you promised? Uh, I would, but doesn't the legend of the turn fire teach us not to look back? Let's not go dredging up the past. Tell me more about this Kinich guy. One more story, I swear, starting now. No? Careful, Toba. You look dangerously close to cursing me out right now. Tut tut. We can't have that. Cursing is for grown-ups only. Uncle, you'd better not be trying to trick us, or the Turnfire will get you when you die. How would it get me if I'm outside of Natlan? Uncle Glasses isn't from here, you know. Unlike you. Huh? Wait... Is that...? All right, kiddos. I'm a man of my word. Two of my friends are on their way here, and, uh... Yeah, they'll help you out on my behalf. Work them like dogs, okay? That's what they're here for. Don't go easy on them just for my sake. Really? Well, first, can you tell us your name? We met at the foot of this cliff, so beneath the peaks, let's go with Sanka. Seriously? If you don't believe me, turn around and see for yourselves. They're right behind you. Huh? Where? Yeah, definitely a fishy character. It sounds like he was digging for info about the ancient names. Yeah, and not only that, but he betrayed us, too. He'll pay for this. All he got out of us was some stories, though. What's the worst that could happen? Hmm. Traveler, maybe we should go tell Kanich about this. 
A house says he's investigating it, but he's a bit of a loose cannon. We probably shouldn't take him at his word. Huh? You know Kanich? Um, not very well, but we have met him before, and one time we had a meal together. Aw, oh, man, I'm so jealous. I never even spoken to him. He's so cool. He's the Saurian hunter, and he has a really awesome ancient name. Me neither. I don't think my dad really likes him, though. He always tells me to stay away from him. Probably because of that little creep he always hangs out with. He's nasty, and he's so full of himself. Oh, the creep who calls himself Kahul Ahau? Yeah, we've had the... pleasure of meeting him, too. He sure loves pushing people's buttons. Exactly. I don't know why Kenich partnered up with him. Why didn't he pick me instead? Uh-oh. Honey, look how late it is. We've been out way too long. We better get home now or we'll get yelled at. Oh, yikes. You're right. Okay, well, this path here leads to our settlement. If you decide to visit, remember to come to my house. If there's anything you need, my dad can help get it for you. Hope to see you soon. We gotta run. Bye for now. Hooney, what were you thinking going out by yourself? Don't you know how dangerous it is? It's okay. Toba helped me. And we met some kind strangers who helped us. And... Kind strangers? What made you so sure they were so kind, huh? Oh, I suppose they had kind stranger written on their foreheads? Uh, yeah, actually, they did. In big, bold letters. Don't talk back to me. The Mountain King problem still hasn't been solved. What would I do if I lost you too? No dinner for you tonight. They were good people, Dad. Dinner or no dinner. Hello again, Hoonie. Uh, it's Miss Paimon and Mr. Traveler. Dad, it's them. They're the ones who helped me. And I promised we'd take care of them if they came to visit. Oh... So you're the kind strangers. Well, I'm Trinidad. Apparently, you helped my daughter today, so if there's anything you need, just ask. As an elder of the Scions of the Canopy, I've got some influence around here. Now, I trust that you're sensible people who know better than to take advantage of their host's generosity. Yep, just helping a neighbor. We're not looking for anything in return. Oh? Well, let's hope so. Dad, please! They're not bad people! They've eaten at the same table with Kanich before! Be nice to them! Kanich? Wait! I heard that two mysterious travelers from afar showed up at the Stadium of the Sacred Flame. Are they... you? And Paimon's the other! Uh... <coughs> uh... I do apologize. A lot's been going on in our tribe lately, and I suppose the pressure must be getting to me. <laughs> uh, I can't believe I was so rude to you. I, I, uh, I feel ashamed. Uh, we got off on the wrong foot. Can we, uh, start over? Oh, now we're talking. Seriously, though, don't worry about it. Already forgotten. We're just happy to see Hooney got home safe and sound. Oh, you just arrived, I take it, and, and it would be my honor to give you a hero's welcome tonight. Careful now, that's quite an about face. We've heard that kind of thing can lead to spontaneous combustion around these parts. <coughs> uh. <laughs> my dear traveler, you are very perceptive indeed. Go inside now, Hooney. Dad's got some important business to discuss. Okay. Look after Mr. Traveler and Miss Paimon. They're very special guests. Well, we'll hear you out, but we can't make any promises that we'll be able to help. <clears throat> well, this is a matter of utmost importance. Please uh, allow me to explain. For many years, our tribe has celebrated the Turnfire Night. It is a traditional ceremony among the scions of the canopy in which we remember 
our ancestor, Burkina, and his companion, Kangamato, the Mountain King. Burkina was a hero who bore the ancient name Malipo, and Kangamato was a powerful Yumkasur warrior. Together, they fought against the Abyss. They were victorious, but it came at a great cost. Burkina paid with his life. The Mountain King survived, but was contaminated by the Abyss, and he remains in hibernation to this day. Normally, Yumkasors never live longer than a century. It is possible that the Abyssal Power is responsible for his unnaturally long lifespan. Oh, that's right. The Mountain King is a living symbol of our glory, but even this glory comes at a price. The Abyssal Power inside him is highly sensitive, and when it is disturbed... He awakens and flies into a blind rage, attacking anything that moves. So, besides the ceremony, another important part of Turnfire Night each year is cleansing the abyssal power inside the Mountain King so that he will remain sound asleep. However, abyss-related incidents have been on the rise in that land lately, as I'm sure you're both aware. As a result, it has become increasingly difficult to keep the Mountain King in hibernation. Only five months have passed since the last Turnfire Night, and he's already showing signs of instability. Has he woken up again? He has. We managed to contain the situation by performing a makeshift ceremony right away, but it was a close call. He could reawaken at any moment. Also, he attacked and wounded my companion, Nana, during the ceremony. She became contaminated by the Abyss as a result, and... We heard. Such a tragedy. We're really sorry for your loss. Ah, <sighs> yes, and Nana wasn't the first. Anyway, right now we're preparing for an exceptional Turnfire Night ceremony, and we need to find a suitable flame bearer. From what I've heard about your adventures... I believe you would be perfect for the role. Of course. Plus, he's a bona fide hero who inherited the Malipo name. Oh, you mean Kanich? Yes, he's the one. A hero worth his weight in gold. And unfortunately for us, he's all too aware of that. No prizes for guessing what he said when I asked him to host a Turnfire Night outside of the annual schedule. An exceptional ceremony? Oh, I'll have to charge an exceptional price. I swear, no other concept exists in that boy's brain. I'm not the one to usually talk about people behind their backs, but I'm convinced the Wyab got hit on the head and took a wrong turn the day it chose to give that ancient name to him. I mean, have you ever heard of a hero whose mantra is, what's your asking price? Oh, and don't get me started on that insufferable a-how he hangs around with. Oh, thinks he's God's gift to mankind. Pompous fool. Yeah, Paimon has to agree on that last part. <sighs> anyway, the fact is, the ceremony can just as easily be done without him as long as we can find someone else. And besides, you two seem like much better candidates. <laughs> so, uh, what do you think? Wonderful! I can't thank you enough. Hooney was right about you. You have kindness in your hearts. Come with me to the other side of the mountain. I'll bring you up to speed on each step of the ceremony. Less experienced warriors, I'm sure you'll pick it up in no time. Ah! Ah! Achoo! Mm, curses! Who dares insult the great Kahul Ahau behind his back? Oh, great Kahul Ahau! Bless you. Shut your filthy mouth, worm of the abyss. Your putrid words defile the air we breathe. You make the almighty dragon lord, Kahula Howe, sick to the stomach. Speaking as a member of the abyss order, that's music to my ears. Exactly the kind of reaction we're going for. But on a personal level, I gotta say, it's pretty hurtful. Ugh, never have we heard such brazen blustering from someone who is inches from death. Up yours, four eyes. We spit in your face. 
Okay, well, that I am at a loss to explain. How do I manage to stay so chirpy and cheerful? I can only guess it's some kind of powerful magic. But I digress. Mr. Kinich, I admit it, you, sir, are a legendary hunter. Still, the only reason you caught me is that I was reluctant to run away. You see, I'm very interested in the lore of your tribe. K. Is that it? K? Aren't you intrigued to know what it is about you guys that prompted a visit from the Abyss? It's the extreme sports! The other day, I narrowly avoided getting hit by a very brave soul who just leaped off a cliff. I think you call it bungee jumping? Anyway, I was very impressed. That is what I call embracing the spirit of adventure. Look, I even did a painting inspired by the bravery and freedom of the scions of the canopy. You scum-sucking swine! Ugh, I swear, if you go bungee jumping, it'll be without a rope! Head first off the tallest cliff, with a band of hunters on your tail, and nowhere left to run, and a bottomless cesspit waiting for you on the ground. You say that, but I get the sense that Mr. Kinich isn't planning to take my life right now. On top of that, I'm tired of spying on you from afar. So why don't we just negotiate a comfortable operating distance that works for both of us? I've heard that the most important thing in human relationships is to respect each other's boundaries. What do you say, Mr. Kinich? Hmm. <laughs> or, you could tell me what it is you're really after. What? And then I'll name my price. <sighs> the abyss contamination is back. No surprises there. No doubt that explains the Mountain King's recent activity. See those torches over there? Those are the Sacred Flame offshoots that we requested from the Stadium of the Sacred Flame. They contain the power of the Pyro Archon. Are you saying that the Sacred Flame and the Turnfire are the same thing? Well, for ceremonial purposes, at least. Sending someone to the Night Kingdom to retrieve the legendary Turnfire isn't exactly an option. More to the point, though, the Sacred Flame is able to burn away abyssal filth, so that's why we use it in the ceremony. Gotcha! So basically, we just need to clean up the filth with the Sacred Flame. Well, that's one part of it, yes, but the complete ceremony is a bit more complicated than that. First, the flame bearer must collect a kindling of the sacred flame from the starting point, then use a grappling hook to fly up into the sky and light each of the sacred flame pillars. Then, they must go down into the canyon, all the way into the cave where the mountain king slumbers, lighting braziers and the final altar along the way. The most skilled flame bearers can accomplish all of this without touching the ground once, as much as I hate to admit it, Kanich is capable of this. Wow! He can do all that flying without ever falling to the ground? Well, of course, Paimon can. It'd be much harder for you guys. <laughs> well, don't worry. It's not a requirement of the ceremony. You're allowed to touch the ground. The only thing you're not allowed to do is turn back. The flame bearer must always keep moving forward. You can't skip a pillar, then come back to it after lighting the next one. To do so would be to disrespect our ancestors. So, what actually happens if you do turn back? Surely the fires don't just go out. Um, well, uh, if you're not careful, you might get burned. What about today, then? Does the same rule apply? Oh, no. Don't worry. Today is just a practice. The order doesn't matter. You just need to take the sacred flame, cleanse the filth, then go light all the braziers. Are you ready? I'll repeat all the key points again. Gather the kindling, cleanse the filth, and light all the braziers. I'll wait for you at the end. Ready when you are. Oh, and uh, I'll repeat the key points again. Gather the kindling, cleanse the filth, and light all the braziers. All right, let's use this kindling to complete our mission. There's a bit of filth over there. Let's burn it away with the sacred flame. That should be all the braces.
adventures, let's regroup with Trinidad. I knew I was right about you. You have outperformed all of the other previous candidates. If there was an ancient name for outstanding flame bearers, <laughs> I'm sure the Wyab would consider you for the honor. Yeah, although it would probably take Paimon quite a bit longer. <laughs> all right, now there's still a few days left until the ceremony, and I should probably get back so I can inform the chief and the other elders that I have found the flame bearer we need. You mean they've still got to sign off on it? Some of them are still hoping we can come to an agreement with Kanich, but that's only because they haven't seen you in action. Still, hmm, I'm the one responsible for securing a flame bearer, and my recommendation is you. Um, just for Paimon's own peace of mind, are you sure it's not going to be a problem having Outlanders take on such an important role in your ceremony? See that place over there? There was a time, long before the age of Burkina and the Mountain King, when we, Scions of the Canopy, called that our home. After a period of upheaval, our ancestors were forced to move away. Now, it has become a place where our youths go to develop courage and kindle a spirit of adventure. If we fail to keep the threat posed by the Mountain King at bay, it might not be long before we have to move again and find a new home. So, to answer your question, I think everyone will agree that you are the right choice. Fair enough. Desperate times call for desperate measures. I'll need you to drop by my place at some point before the ceremony, if that's all right. There are still a few final details that we need to discuss. Okay, see you later then. You have my gratitude. We've helped out with a lot of other local festivals before, but... This one feels a little... different. Anyway, let's take a break before heading back to Trinidad's place. She's not back yet. Oh, I hope nothing bad happened to Master Chevin. Hey, that little kid is crying. Wonder what happened. Let's go check what's wrong. <laughs> Master Chevin, she... she... She went to gather volcanic crystals, but she's still not back yet. <laughs> I told the guards, but they said they don't have people to spare. Plus, that area's super dangerous, with tons of monsters and bad guys. <laughs> they, they have to finish making preparations before they can try to rescue her. But it'll be too late by then. So, you'll help? Great! I'll just make a quick sketch to show you where the guards went earlier. They said Master Chevin might have stopped around here. She might have been forced to go near the Umbral Needle. If that's the case, then... Well, they didn't put up much of a fight. <sighs> Thank you so much. I thought I wasn't going to make it down this mountain alive. Saved by the Traveler. Guess my luck's not too bad today. Uh -huh. Sorry, let me introduce myself. I'm Chevin, a gem artisan. I'm not usually this lucky, but maybe things are looking up. She did, huh? I didn't mean to make her worry. I wasn't planning to be gone longer than two days, tops. But then, I discovered a new seam of volcanic crystal near the Umbral Needle. It's a large deposit, and the purity is exceptional. I dug up a whole bunch of it and was getting ready to head back. But the phlogiston within the crystals attracted monsters. Anyway, I'm sure you've seen the state this place is in. It's all because the Umbral Needle suddenly came crashing to the ground and left behind a massive crater. 
The seam I found was closer to the outside, so it survived the disaster. Still, the crash riled up the monsters in the area, and now they're everywhere. I panicked and ran up a narrow path to avoid them. But by the time I was in the clear, I ended up running into those bandits. You showed up in the nick of time. If the situation was so dangerous, why didn't you just drop the crystals and run? I left most of them behind, believe me. I only kept the purest chunk. I have to bring it back no matter what. For Tlasoli and poor little Nechka. Ah, right, you wouldn't know. Tlasoli is a former ancient name artisan, and Nechka is her daughter. Oh, you know Shilonen? <laughs> Try mentioning that name in front of Tlasoli. She could sing Shilonen's praises forever. The foremost expert in ancient names. The future of our tribe. The finest artisan in that land. You'll never hear the end of it. I know Tlasoli misses the days when she used to forge ancient names. She'd never say as much, but I can tell. Because of her daughter. Poor Nechka contracted an awful illness, and Tlasoli put everything aside to take care of her. Even as Nechka's illness grew worse, Tlasoli never gave up. Like a torch in the night, she was determined to burn bright, even as darkness encroached from all directions. Still, all's well that ends well, thanks to the doctor's medicine and the great spirit's protection. Nechka's flame was rekindled. Her condition has been slowly improving ever since. She's still weak, of course, and has to recuperate at home. But she's well enough to write letters already. She often writes to Shilonen, apparently. Her dream is to become an ancient names forger, just like her mother. Her birthday's in a few days, so... Tlasoli asked me to find a pure volcanic crystal to give her as a present. Yeah, talk about an important chunk of lore! What a nice gift! Paimon hopes it helps her feel better. I'm sure she and her mother appreciate your well wishes. All right, let's head back. I'm sure Emish is worried sick. Actually, why don't you come with me to visit Tlasoli tomorrow? It's all thanks to you that I managed to bring back the crystal. You deserve a reward for helping us protect something so significant. That's right! A good mood makes for a quick recovery! And of course, we... Wouldn't say no to a little gift. <laughs> Don't worry. Something tells me you'll like this one. But I'll let Tlasoli tell you what it is herself. Oh, you're early. Looking forward to your gift? That's right. Nechka's been so sick, and Tlasoli had to give up what she loves. Things might get better, but they could probably still use some cheering up. <laughs> I've already asked someone to swing by and let Tlasoli know we're coming. She's probably made all the necessary preparations. Let's go, then. Do you mind watching the story, Mish? I'll be right back. Here we are. Nice house, right? Give me a sec. I'll go knock. Tlasoli, open up! They're here! Tlasoli? Are you home? Open the door! That's strange. Huh, the door's locked. But she shouldn't be out at this time of day. Hey, Nechka! Nechka! It's me, Chevin! Open up, please! Still, I told Tlasoli we were coming. Maybe she had to take Nechka out to get some medicine. Hey, what's that over there? Looks like a Tepetlisaur nest. That's right. Tlasoli has a Tepetlisaur companion. If I remember right, its name is Iengu? When she was still in the forging business, she'd often have Iengu help with some digging work. But since Nechka fell ill, she hasn't let it dig much recently. Wait a minute. What the... This place is a mess! Yango's nowhere to be seen, either. Whoa, look at all these broken boxes. Something terrible must have happened. Huh, there really is a Tepetlasaur up here. Might not be Tlasoli's companion, though. 
Uh, Paimon still doesn't see any sign of Tosoli. Hey, Traveler, Paimon! That's Kevin's voice! Come down, quick! Tlasoli's here! Huh? We just got up here and Tlasoli's back already? What a coincidence. Uh, why is the Tepatlasaur coming along? Whoa, hey, hey, don't run, you'll hit us! Iangu, come here. Are you being naughty again? <sighs> oh, that's a good Saurian. Oh, you must be hungry. Sorry, I'll whip up something for you later. All right, run along and play now. I'll come along in a sec. <sighs> oh, sorry, you two. I was waiting for you at home when Nechka... Well, she snuck out and ran off by herself. She said she just wanted to pick some flowers for our guests. But she ended up getting lost along the way. Luckily, I managed to find her before long. Yeah, Kevin told us she was just starting to get better. She's still very weak. The shock and the cold winds certainly didn't help, so she ended up with a slight fever. I gave her some medicine and now she's in bed. But it's nothing a good night's rest can't fix. That said, she won't be able to meet you today. I'm sorry you came all this way for nothing. Don't worry about it. We know she's still recovering. Chevin told us how serious her illness was. Her health definitely comes first. We were just dropping by to check on her. Yes, and to run away from eating her vegetables. She's a fast one, that's for sure. She jumps over chairs, hides under the table, then runs all around the house. I can hardly catch her. Seeing how she is now, that's already enough. I really couldn't ask for more. Hey, cheer up. This is supposed to be a happy occasion. We do appreciate that she tried to welcome us with flowers. Anyway, Tlasoli, about the thing I was telling you before. Yeah, what did you get us? Well, it's a blaze gem inscription. I made it from the purest ore, so it's almost completely resistant to erosion. The techniques used to make it are all rooted in ancient name forging. <laughs> Don't say that or the wild might smite me. The process just uses a few of the same techniques and materials. When I first made one, I didn't think it could serve any practical purpose, apart from the erosion resistance and the general aesthetic. But then Chevin suggested using the crystals to make a special kind of ornament. Blaze gem inscriptions made by an ancient name artisan, engraved with words that never fade. Quite the sales pitch, don't you think? Wow, that description really does make it seem special. <laughs> Tlasoli's blaze gem inscriptions really are special, though. Word of mouth isn't always reliable. As information gets passed along, it becomes incomplete, forgotten, and sometimes even distorted. But the words inscribed on these crystals will stand the test of time. The inscription will never deteriorate, and the meaning will never get twisted. It's the perfect gift for a dear friend or significant other. You could even pass it down to younger generations. Paimon's interested! Let's buy one, Traveler! We can engrave our names onto it! Then, once we find your sister, we can get her to add her name as well! You deserve it! You saved me! And Nechka's birthday present! It's the least I can do to repay you. Chevin, I thought I told you... Don't you start acting shy too, Tlasoli. It's a great gift. I know how much work goes into one of your Blaze Gem inscriptions. Well then, thank you both. I'll have it ready as soon as possible. Then, I'll have you do the inscription yourself. Nechka should be well by then. She'll be very excited to meet you. Whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We don't even know how expensive that would be. You sure we have enough travel funds? Hold on, this isn't part of some scheme to make us spend all of our mora, right? Chevin? You never know. You do look like you have some savings to spare. No, don't listen to that, Traveler. You'll end up losing all your mora. 
<laughs> In any case, it's up to you. Also, if you don't mind, Tlesoli, I'd like you to help me repair my blaze gem inscription. I dropped it when I was attacked earlier. The rope and clasp both snapped, so I haven't been wearing it. I tried fixing it myself, but I just couldn't get it to stay. Could you help? Just leave it to me. I'll make it as good as new. Thank you, Chevin, for going all that way and... It was nothing. We all just want Nechka to get better. You're right. Yangu, behave yourself. I'll feed you in just a second. I'll have Chevin contact you once everything's ready, Traveler. Maybe we'll even line it up with Nechka's birthday. We can even have a little party. Oh, that sounds great! We'll look forward to all the good food, and we'll make sure we're ready to eat. Anyway, see you around, Fosoli! Look after yourselves. Nechka is going to be so happy to meet you. <laughs>